Good morning, good afternoon and good evening from Helsinki and uh, welcome to the Pulse of Networks uh, webinar series episode 11. My name is uh, Klaus Thiel and uh, I am the CTO of Creanord and I'm also joined here by Mr. Mika Mattila, Director of Sales Engineering at Creanord. Hello. Uh, this session is a follow-up session to our bandwidth webinar from November and uh, today we are going a bit more technical, uh, diving deeper into some uh, selected use cases to illustrate how our customers have used our bandwidth management capabilities to improve the quality of their networks. Let's quickly recap from our previous webinar why bandwidth management uh, is so important. Uh, in today's networks, we have a variety of traffic with uh, different characteristics, video, voice, mission critical, cloud, gaming, and so forth. Uh, these traffic types have different demands on the network and different priorities. Uh, and the challenge is to make sure that each of these traffic types are, are getting the performance they need in a consistent manner. Uh, and moving forward, the complexity increases further. So for instance, in the 5G networks, um, you will typically have eight or more service classes um, to manage uh, compared to, to only four service classes typically in the 4G network. So there's a lot of different service classes to, to, to man manage and monitor. And, and with more and more high priority and, and business critical data on the network, we can no longer allow for the network to be down uh, for any periods of times, really. Traffic interruptions must be resolved swiftly to keep the network up and running at all times. With all the different traffic types on your network, knowing what type of traffic you have running in the network is, is vital in order to plan correctly for the future and for troubleshooting, of course, as well. Uh, and, and you also need to move to a, a more proactive mode where you predict future bottlenecks in the network uh, and modify the network or increase capacity to meet the future traffic demands uh, before uh, uh, any bottlenecks start to affect the service quality. In the previous webinar, we described our vision for how bandwidth management needs to evolve uh, from a link-centric monitoring to a centralized approach and, and further into an end-to-end -end view. Uh, so currently, data is collected separately for each link with, with uh, obvious challenges on, on scalability, granularity, and the type of data that can be collected. Moving to a centralized approach, you can use specialized hardware cost efficiently and get the data granularity that you need with microburst detection capabilities. And as the final goal, you want to monitor bandwidth end-to-end -end for specific scenarios where you, uh, for instance, want to ensure proactively that you have the bandwidth that you need. Uh, but let's illustrate this by looking at some selected uh, customer use cases and show how they are using the approaches described here to stay on top of what is happening to their networks. So the first area for us to look at today are the more traditional SNMP polling based uh, monitoring solutions, but which are augmented by today's requirements, meaning that they are high polling frequency and high performance capable and can be deployed in a distributed model. This example customer was already doing TVA monitoring uh, from their prop locations towards their over 10,000 small offices routers testing those paths end to end and reporting on the usual three active monitoring KPIs, latency, jitter, and packet loss. Very typical use case and already giving them great visibility to the quality and trends of all of their thousands of connections in the network. In addition, and as is also quite typical that we see happening in the projects, is that shortly after first deployment, this customer also became interested of being able to monitor the bandwidth utilization and trends in their connections. And they wanted to do that in a very straightforward and easy way. 
This was possible just via a simple upgrade to their existing system and just re-employing their already existing probes to do also the high frequency SNMP polling, but not just for bandwidth monitoring, but also they wanted to be able to see inside the routers, meaning that if they were to become too congested in memory or CPU utilization or overheating. Also observing for these and the trends and the patterns involved was important for them so that they could be sure that there will not be issues even in going forward when traffic amounts will pick up and also that for instance capacity upgrades can be started early on where needed. Other benefits of such solutions they saw useful Uh, where that they could uh, use the inbuilt math functions of the solution and be able to report directly in terms of say megabits per second instead of some octets that don't mean anything to most people. Or take a few IDs and convert them into something directly meaningful as in percentage values. And this way they were able to report on everything that's needed directly in terms and quantities that instantly made sense to people. Also easy correlations were now possible having all the different KPIs in one system. As the key values in the end, this customer achieved a much fuller and deeper understanding of their network quality and trends, and also enhanced trust that the network will most likely continue to serve all of their employees in such a way that there will not be costly outages and lost time and money and that if there still were to be issues, they could be quickly isolated, rooted out or fixed, and also capacity upgrades could now be planned and started in time. Here on the left, we can see some examples of their implemented SNMP drivers. Using them, customer could freely choose any meaningful set of OID, OIDs or object identifiers to poll and then use them inside the math functions, as you can see here in these pictures on the left. And by this way, they were also able to define how to call each of the resulting new calculated KPIs and in which units they wanted to report on them so that they will be shown directly in terms that can be easily understood by their various teams. There are also shown a couple of examples of typically used sets of router bandwidth utilization and health related calculated KPIs and on the right, how they could be correlated to each other. Interestingly enough, in these examples on the right, we can see that even a short spike in traffic where port utilization peaks just to 200 megabits per second and only for a short moment, it instantly has an effect on memory utilization on the router, but also on its port temperature. In CPU utilization, we don't see similar effect most probably, because it is a much faster process and this method is not granular enough to show it. Typically these kinds of KPIs are further correlated also to active measurement results like TVAM, which can be highly useful in providing a much fuller view of the performance of any network. Our next use case describes a European media service provider uh, providing both content production uh, and distribution of live events for events organizers, sport federations and, and media organizations. Um, in this particular case, the issue was uh, the distribution of the content from the event to their nearest point of presence. Uh, the company has its own internal content distribution network with the pops in major European cities. And for each event, the company would bring in their specialized uh, media kit into the location of the event and would then lease connectivity from a third party from the event location to the nearest pop location for further distribution of the content. Um, and in order to ensure the highest possible quality of the content, they needed to proactively ensure that the third party lease line was meeting the specifications. Uh, and therefore looked for a solution to monitor the, the quality of this leased line. The solution uh, in this particular case was for them to combine both active and passive data uh, to get a complete picture of the link quality uh, and, and data before and during the event. <clears throat> With a smart SFP deployed in the stadium kit, 
the customer was able to monitor both the bandwidth utilization as well as actively monitor the quality uh, of the least line connection from the pop location to the stadium kit using TVAMP. Before the event, the customer runs a Y1564 service activation test to validate that the third party connection is meeting the agreed SLA. This validation is done for each of the service classes individually, uh, as well as the combination of all the service class traffic running at the same time. Um, these tests are, are further stored centrally and, and can thus be used um, as a baseline for the next time when there is an event at the same location uh, to benchmark uh, the, the new least line uh, uh, obtained and, and compare with the old one. Uh, then during the event, uh, an active TVAMP test would be running continuously in the background for each of the service classes to ensure that the quality remains good. Uh, and uh, at the same time, they would also monitor the bandwidth utilization to ensure that the util utilization of the link is not too high. Uh, we want to illustrate uh, this use case um, with the demo to highlight the importance of looking at both passive and active data. <clears throat> Depending on your network, looking just at the bandwidth utilization may not be enough. You need to have active data at your disposal as well and look at the complete picture in order to understand how the traffic is really doing in your network. Uh, in this demo setup, we have two probes uh, generating traffic uh, to the left on the picture. Uh, one of the probes will generate 50 megabits background traffic, uh, fairly well behaving, uh, while the other probe will inject very bursty traffic um, at increments of, of 100 megabits per second. Both of these traffic sources uh, uh, send traffic towards the third probe, and we use a smart SFP uh, to monitor the bandwidth utilization and to reflect back the active uh, test traffic. <clears throat> and just as the background, so we have a one gigabit network here. So in, in that sense, um, uh, fr from the starting point, we have enough capacity to carry all of, the, of this traffic. So, um, Let's have a look at the demo. So here uh, you see in the, in the upper left corner, uh, you see a, a monitoring of, uh, uh, of the passive data, the bandwidth utilization uh, 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 seen from, from the point of view of the smart SFP. Um, and in the bottom uh, right corner, you see the uh, active data, uh, the QoS monitoring data, the jitter, delay, packet loss being monitored end to end from, from the probe uh, on the left to the, to the smart SFP to monitor uh, 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 it in, in, in the background. So let's, uh, let's run, the, run the demo. So we start by um, injecting the background traffic 50 megabits. And, and we can see then on the right that we, the maximum delay illustrated by the purple line will go, go up a bit. Uh, the average delay, the, the middle line there, the blue one, uh, just rises a bit. And, and we have also some delay variation, the, the light green line, um, but, but everything looks good. So this, this illustrates that this traffic is a bit bursty, but not that much. Uh, we start to inject the very bursty traffic, uh, 100 megabits additional bursty traffic. And, and now we can see that the, the maximum delay uh, jumps up quite a lot. So uh, compared with the average delay, which, which doesn't increase that much. This shows to us that this really much more bursty traffic on the line. And we can also see the delay variation rising. Uh, we inject another 100 megabits per second of, of bursty, bursty traffic on, onto the link. Further, um, we will see some increase in the maximum delays, uh, not so much in the average delay, but the delay variation will also go up a bit 
to illustrate that we have even more bursty traffic on the line. But the interesting point is actually when we inject finally the, the last 100 megabits of, of, of bursty traffic uh, uh, on the line. And now we can see on the, on the, on the upper left that we actually are, are not getting all of the traffic through. So uh, the network starts to, to drop some traffic, which, which can actually be verified by the active data in the bottom, bottom right. So, so uh, the yellow line there uh, uh, shows the packet loss and it, it goes up to, to something like 13% 13, 13 showing that we have a serious situation uh, on our third, third part leased line. And, and this demo was really to, to illustrate how important it is with, to have both active and passive data. So um, uh, if I had only the passive data with the bandwidth utilization, um, and I, did not, and, uh, I would, not, of course, not know beforehand how much traffic to expect on the links, I would not really see from my view that, that I have a serious situation in the network. But um, um, on, from the active data, I can, I can Combine, combine the, in the combined view, so the, in the active data, I see that I have a lot of packet loss and, and that, that I really need to do something uh, with the network. And as we can see here, we had a one gig, gigabit network, but, but still, even with the 350 megabit traffic, you can have issues um, if, if you have too much burst, bursts in the, in the traffic and if, if your network doesn't have the, enough uh, queuing capacity. So, so uh, it's very important that you have both active and passive data uh, available when, when you are monitoring these types of, of connections. So here we next cover <clears throat> about solutions of how one could do bandwidth management with all of today's strict requirements and in vast scale network wide. And as in this example case, for over 100,000 uh, service level flows that were already present in a customer network. So in this customer case, the mobile backhaul operator had challenges in keeping up of used bandwidth levels of all of the service level traffic flows in their network. The more obvious ideas of traditional approaches like SNMP monitoring or use of smart SFPs or other traditional passive monitoring means, means just would not give them the visibility they were after. Not really even technically, but also not for any reasonable cost. And quite early on in the thinking process, it had become clear to them that some new approach will be needed. And as the outcome uh, of the thinking process and fitting perfectly to, for instance, mobile backhaul network and most enterprise networks became passive centralized link utilization monitoring type of solutions where you no longer analyze the traffic flows in the access locations, but instead in core locations, where you can see the exact same flows. But since you are now doing the monitoring in core locations from the big pipes there, all things can be done in scale with greater efficiencies and for much cheaper cost per monitored flow. Other benefits of such solutions include that one can observe things also in a very granular way and even visibility to microbursts can be achieved uh, with these kind of solutions. And again, the same solution should provide also for active monitoring capabilities for the fullest visibility, as we've seen. It is very important. Let us next look at some of the other benefits that a solution like this uh, can bring to operators, uh, and enterprises, and the like. So in our last webinar, we talked to you through how link utilization monitoring type of solutions work. And here in this webinar, we rather wanted to concentrate on some of the other useful value adds of such solutions and show how they can really help in doing bandwidth management in an efficient and um, effortless way. Obviously the system uh, needs to talk to you and alert you when there is some change that needs your attention. That's a clear starting point. And these alerts, they should come in as per your choice, feeding your environment in SNMP traps, uh, emails, SMSs, or via REST API. And once something that needs your attention has happened, you'll want to quickly and easily check about it. And in many cases, do a quick troubleshooting or validation right after. In such situations, it is key uh, that you can have a clear starting point 
and an easy intuitive, uh, easy intuitive steps to follow. And it is also helpful if there is a carefully thought of logic behind the steps that need to be taken of always starting from top level of the alerting object itself. And then you just easily click through, uh, drilling into as much details as needed to find and solve what you need. Here in this example, in this slide, we come from the top level dashboard view of the alerting object and notice, notice there is some spiking anomaly in the flow, which we will want to investigate deeper. We can simply zoom into uh, that flow from top level view and then choose the tool with which we want to observe things in more detail. And in this case, we wanted to focus on the burst details of this specific flow. So we click on the icon there on the left picture and are then taken to the specific flows more detailed visualization where we can also further drill down to say second by second uh, granularity or even below getting visibility even to microbursts. Having such tools, it is quite effortless to study on any odd behavior that may be happening in the network, in any flow with great granularity and from many aspects. It is also extremely easy to study, for instance, about packet size distributions of any class of service flow, as you can see there in the picture on the right. Uh, probably one of the ultimate troubleshooting drills could be to find out uh, who is the misbehaving host in the network and, and by doing what. Let us look at that uh, in the next slide. So the ultimate troubleshooting drill could be, for instance, how to find a misbehaving IP and application in your network. With solutions like these, this, uh, even this uh, is possible within minutes. Such a troubleshooting drill could be starting from the kinds of views as you saw already in the previous slide, meaning that one gets an alert that some violation compared to pre-programmed or machine learned levels or behavior has been detected by the system. And therefore we again wanted to start from top and observe the different flows behaviors inside that say a 10 gigabit link. And we can then easily zoom in and see in which traffic class and with which detailed patterns the misbehavior exists. The next simple step is to initiate a pickup from the system uh, or pickup recording from the system directly and easily from the UI itself, of course, as you can see in the picture on the left there for that specific VLAN or DSCP traffic flow. Next, by looking and analyzing the produced pickup file contents, it can be then determined the host that would seem to be causing the problematic traffic. So now we know the host. And from the used port numbers, we can also then identify the application that is causing the spikes or congestion we were set to investigate. Having now identified both the host and application and the behavior pattern, behavioral patterns, we can then, as the next step, start the work to find out if that host has, for instance, just gone wild or whatever, and we can then take any needed corrective next steps with the respective teams. The next use case is from, from Poland. This is a big mobile operator uh, that uses radio links in, in many access locations where fiber is not available. Uh, when there was a performance issues with the link previously, they had to send out a technician to the site to manually troubleshoot the quality of the connection uh, with specialized test equipment. The site visits were obviously quite costly and consumed a lot of time for the technicians. Uh, so they wanted to find a more efficient method to monitor the link quality remotely. The solution for this customer was to install a probe uh, at the central location to be used as a test head and uh, use the Y1564 service activation tests to test the quality to the near end and, and far end radio link sites. It's worth noting also here that this methodology only required the installation of a central probe. Uh, the equipment on the radio link sites already included functionality to loop back the test traffic. So there was no need for specialized hardware uh, at, at these sites. And, and then by comparing the results for the near end and far end, they could conclude from the difference in the results whether there was some issue with the radio link or not. Um, 
And also in this case, as an additional benefit, uh, the tests and the test results are, are centrally stored. So it's easy to compare uh, your results with, with previous results. And it's also easy to rerun the tests with the same settings uh, as was previously used. As a drawback with this methodology, the Y1564 test is intrusive. So, so you can only run it in a maintenance window, or then you can alternatively use a smaller bandwidth settings for the, for the flows um, in order to not affect the live traffic too much. That was a great lead in to this uh, last topic of, of today. Uh, so as the icing on the cake, uh, we again, as the last of the five methodologies presented, uh, cover the concept and test type of unintrusive available bandwidth monitoring solution, or UABM in short. As you may remember from our last webinar, this methodology was about figuring out the available path, path bandwidth between any two points, but in an unintrusive way. So without filling the end-to-end -end path completely to see how much traffic could be pushed uh, through. This kind of test type, as we have found, is a rather demanding one to be developed. And as per our research, research uh, there are only two companies in the world who can commercially offer this type of measurement solution on telco grade level as of today. Uh, the first case where we ever learned about the need for such a measurement in the market was an electricity company a few years ago needing to validate uh, 24 by 7 by 365 that all of their uh, stations in their grid have the allocated bandwidth available for important metering information dispatches, which could occur frequently uh, throughout every day. So it was not an option for them to test about available bandwidth between the stations with the traditional intrusive means, but it had to be done in an unintrusive way and several times per hour. The second case uh, we have been involved for such is a governmental agency needing to do recurring validations of their office uh, connections available bandwidth, and again without filling the network uh, with the test traffic to find it out. And also there was uh, the more academic uh, connected uh, schools uh, project. Different kinds of customers, but the basic requirement remains the same, and it is quite clear and obvious to see why having such testing methodology available would be a pretty good idea. And luckily, by today, there are at least uh, two vendors existing who can offer such solution uh, for commercial market. Uh, thinking about the potential market for such as a whole, it is not very difficult to come up uh, with even a longer list of possible use cases where being able to do such at a reasonable cost would make a lot of sense. And here in the bottom right corner, we are listing just a few of the potential examples we see of different markets where demand for such measurement capability for sure uh, exists. And as the last topic slide uh, of today, we just quickly wanted to show that such solutions can be surprisingly accurate too thanks to the great work of our brilliant uh, engineers and developers. So here in this slide, you can see a rather deterministic test setup that we had in our lab when we first validated about the accuracy of the algorithm and the test. Uh, the idea in this test setup was that uh, we have a well-known and stable 1G uh, path available between the probes on the left, in, on the top and, and bottom there. Uh, through the switch and the router. We then started to squeeze the set ba uh, path bandwidth by sending intrusive test traffic from the probe on the right towards the smart SFP on top of the router in the middle of the picture there. We did this in several increments and in the table uh, on the right in its leftmost column, you can see this deduction, now meaning the expected available bandwidth for our UABM test to detect. We then just simply ran the test in each of the scenarios and recorded the test results of each uh, to the table. Our expectation and target was to reach at least 90% accuracy, but as you can see in the table in the rightmost column, the accuracy was actually even better, closer to 100%. In short, this was 
simply an astonishing result. And with that, I think it is very nice to conclude my part in this webinar. Thanks for watching. So to summarize, uh, we at uh, Creanord have developed a solution, PulseSure, that include telco grade testing solutions to answer a wide variety of different testing requirements in the area of bandwidth management. Uh, we have distributed probes for efficient decentralized SNMP monitoring, smart SFPs for combined active and passive monitoring capabilities, uh, a centralized monitoring solution for the more advanced bandwidth monitoring re requirements, and service activation testing for multiple use cases where we just described one today specifically for remote radio link monitoring. And we are bringing to, to the market the brand new and unique unintrusive available bandwidth monitoring solution uh, as one of the first companies in the world to provide uh, telco grade solutions uh, in this area. Okay, so that's all we have time for today. So thank you for participating. Uh, check out our LinkedIn uh, pages and web pages for upcoming webinars. And if you have any questions or comments uh, on this webinar, please reach out to us. Um, you see our contact information uh, at the, the bottom of this slide. Thanks, everybody.